I'm putting plastic beads and lead shot into a cylinder. So now I'm going to shake this in the same way. And of course, being a theoretician, it's not going to work. But after a while, you can begin to see regions where it's darker and regions where it's red. And you keep doing this for a while. I'm going to be talking about what's called the Brazil nut effect. And in that, there's a capital gamma, which is somewhat like a hangman's gibbet, is the ratio of acceleration to gravity. Well, let's suppose I shake this up and down. Gravity acting downwards has a, an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. If I raise this up slowly, then nothing much moves. But if I shake it violently, at the top part, there's an acceleration and the packet inside will hit the top of the box. So you'll hear it rattling up and down. So the Brazil nut effect comes, I think it was first thought of in about 1930, People notice that if you had a packet of cereal, such as this one, which is muesli, when you open the packet of muesli, first thing in the morning, the heavier particles, the big ones, are on the top. You've got, well, I can point out a Brazil nut there and a cashew nut and some raisins, and down the bottom it's all mixed up. But if I keep shaking it like this, eventually you will find at the top, and it'll take quite a while, there's an almond nut and there's a cashew nut, and all the big particles come there. Or your, you've got your coffee, your instant coffee, and it's, you shake it up just to mix it all up, and you'll find the bigger grains going on the top and the smaller ones underneath. That's what you're trying to do when you, when you mix up your cereal. You're trying to get it uniformly spread. But when you try and do these things, nature plays a trick on you that it doesn't go the way you would imagine. Let me just show you this nice, simple demonstration. Here I've got... Uh, grains, they're green, and a little steel ball on the top. So if I arrange matters so the steel ball is on the bottom, and I shake this up and down for about 10, 15 seconds, after a while you'll notice the ball has come to the top. It's a ratcheting effect. The smaller particles get underneath it, then you throw it up, more small particles get underneath it, and it goes up to the top. Here we have two plates of glass separated by a gap of about three millimetres with little glass spheres. And we put bigger particles, we used aluminium particles, but these are steel washers of roughly the same size, and put them in there. Originally, the research student, Duncan Saunders, did the computing, and he said, you put them in there, and they all cluster together. And we have a video showing his computed results. And so the computed results suggested that these particles would come together like a little swarm of bees and cluster around each other in the middle, which is quite the opposite of what you'd expect, because what you want to do when you're shaking this up is make everything as dispersed as possible. So we did the experiment. Nobody believed that you could actually do the experiment, and the results are shown in the, in the video. And it starts out with particles which are reasonably close together, and you shake it up, and after a while, they act like a little swarm of bees all buzzing around each other. And I'd like to show you, finally, this experiment, I did it a couple of days ago. I'm putting plastic beads and lead shot into a cylinder. The red ones are the plastic beads, the black ones are the tiny little pieces of lead. They have the same sizes. And you shake this about and you try and mix it up and you can't do it, but it's relatively well mixed. And I can use the same parameter gamma. I now have the horizontal version of acceleration, which we always measure in terms of gravity. And then you put in a little bit of water. Not a lot, just a little bit. And you see the water going in, filling through the whole cell, right down to the bottom. And now you have beads moving in water, which you would think, that's not going to make any difference. So now I'm going to shake this in the same way. And of course, being a theoretician, it's not going to work. But after a while, you can begin to see regions where it's darker and regions where it's red. And you keep doing this for a while, and you find patterns emerging. It's black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. It goes into stripes. So you have a mechanism for pattern formation. But why it turns out to be these particular spacing between is a bit of a mystery. Is that five minutes? Yep. Well done. Thank <sighs> you.